So you have the book. It's called Get Married. Right. But I would say a lot of the younger people would say, why get married? So can you answer that question? Why get married? Yeah. So I have a chapter in the book on kind of the myth of the sort of solo, um, you know, flyer, but this idea that kind of, you know, flying solo is the way to go today. As I think a lot of younger adults think that just sort of not putting a ring on it, it's better, you know, just keep your options open, keep mm-hmm. your um, keep your choices kind of available for you to, to pick in terms of your pathway through life and relationships. And what I would say is, look, you know, we are hardwired to connect. Mm-hmm. You know, we're social animals, to use the Aristotle's terminology. Um, we are we're meant to bond with someone else, basically, most of us, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, and just at every level, the sort of the biological, the emotional, the social, the cultural, you know, having the benefit of a spouse and, and then kids usually after that is, you know, just in, just incredible. And, you know, so just to kind of give you one example of how this plays out biologically, and then I'll give you an example of how it plays out, you know, emotionally and financially. I think we've probably heard this idea um, that marriage domesticates men. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you think about, oh, it's just, Maybe it's the girlfriend or the wife, you know, or it's the culture. And yeah, it's all that to some extent. And and when I've raised the point, there's some more progressive women who are like, that I resent the idea that I have to like fix the guy. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's I'm like actually more it's, it's just like that when you get married as a man, like you you're kind of expecting yourself to kind of like, you know, become more responsible and to be more attentive to the woman in your life. And mm-hmm. you know, it's it, there's a lot of it's like just, you know. A personal thing but there's also a physiological piece which is fascinating we're learning more about this now and they've done a study in the philippines looking at how when men are living with someone in a romantic a sexual relationship their testosterone level goes down if it's you know their in-person relationship coercive relationship and then when they have their first kid their testosterone level goes down even more and so there's just a way in which marriage and family at the biological level are really domesticating men in ways that kind of make them settle down become more like you know, pro-social, more responsible oftentimes. And Mm -hmm. that's actually, it's good for guys to have that transition, most of us, you know. So that's a biological point. Financially, there's just no question that men who are married earn between 10 and 25% more than their peers who aren't married. Mm -hmm. And they're much more prudent in how they spend their money. And so they end up in their 50s with 10 times the assets Mm -hmm. as the never married male peers. Um, And there's just no question that for the average guy financially, you're just in a much better spot if you put a ring on it and stay married. Um, so that's that's an important financial point to make to young men today, for instance, but women benefit financially too. Um, and then on the sort of emotional or happiness side, you know, um, what we see is that for both women and men, they're almost twice as likely to be very happy with their lives if they're married with kids compared to being single and childless. Mm-hmm. And particularly for women today, there's just a lot of social media out there, a lot of academics out there who are kind of dissing on marriage for women sort of saying, mm-hmm. you know, you're oppressed, you know, things are not equal, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. You know, you're gonna, your job's gonna suffer if you become married and have kids and da, da. And yes, there are sacrifices. Yes, not every right. marriage is 50-50. Right. Um, most are not, obviously. Um, but you can, you're netting all that out, basically, what you still see is that women who are married with kids are the least lonely. Mm. They report the most meaningful lives, and they're the happiest women out there. Um, and so, on average, right? And of course, there are exceptions, but on average. Right. And so I think we just need to help people understand that we're, um, we're kind of meant to live in community. Mm-hmm. Um, and for most of us, that community is going to take the form of the spouse and kids. And so it's um, better to, to get at that than yeah. to kind of, ignore it or to um postpone it needlessly well a lot of the a lot of the women especially will will think that it is about getting my uh finances in order and it's all about making Mm -hmm. money and that that's far more important to my happiness Mm -hmm. if i just get that and kind of check that box and make Mm -hmm. sure i'm economically secure then i'm that's that's really the road that's the that's the road that we need to find but that actually is not borne out by the data Right. So um, there was this crazy story in Bloomberg that was published, you know, um, not too long ago that sort of said that women who are, you know, kind of steering clear of marriage and motherhood are richer than women who are, you know, getting married and having kids. And what completely overlooked it was that, no, women who are married, stably married, on average, are just way better off financially than women who are not married. So it is true that motherhood, you know, it's it's expensive being a parent. Um, So you do pay you do pay for your kids. (laughs) 
but you know, there are some benefits to having children as well. Um, yes. But on the marriage front, there's just no question that married people are much better off financially, even you know, controlling for their background, mm -hmm. you know, education and professional experiences. Um, so there's that. But on the, I think that the more important point to make here is that when it comes to happiness, the paradox of happiness is that um, both, I think, living for others mm -hmm. and then also developing a real set of, of skills. And some people it's gonna be, you know, they're, maybe they're skilled at, <clears throat> you know, um, at tennis or at piano or football, whatever it might be. And, and, and but the, people take some profound pleasure though from mastering, a, especially a difficult thing, mm -hmm. you know, and doing that well. And so you put those two things together, kind of living for others and mastering a difficult thing. Um, and what you see is that both in terms of being a spouse and being a parent, you have the capacity to live for someone else mm -hmm. or, or a number of people. And then you have the capacity to kind of master a, a something difficult, difficult, you know, endeavor, which is being a part of a family. It's hard. It's I'm not, I don't want to sugarcoat this. Like, right. If you've been married 28 years like I have, there's plenty of times when, you know, we've had difficult days, Absolutely. you know, chapters, months in our marriage. Um, same thing with our kids as well. So, I mean, it's not it's not easy, um, but the sense of meaning that comes from having this long term marriage and having you know, a bunch of kids um, is without compare. And then most of the time, um, you know, I'm pretty ha pretty happy to have a wife and to have a bunch of kids. <laughs> um, and I know too, now that I'm 53, that, that, you know, a number of peers who are either unmarried or childless, um, you know, or both. And, you know, it can be pretty rough road for them to walk without the benefit of a spouse or, or you know, adult children. So I think what young adults think don't appreciate is that mm -hmm. we all age. Right. And I mean, God willing, right? And yeah, right. Unless you die an early death. And you know, by the time you hit your 50s, 60s and 70s, if you don't have family, mm -hmm. it life is pretty tough. You yeah, know, and right. they're, they're not thinking like long term, like mm -hmm. having a spouse and kids. Right. Um, and I have a you know, 50 something friend who got divorced unwillingly, three beautiful daughters. And, you know, he's still single and that's been tough, but mm -hmm. he is so happy with his adult daughters and as a grandfather, you know, he's just, they just had two babies recently, two different daughters. I mean, so again, even though he like, he's, right. he suffered the pain of a divorce he did not seek and did not deserve. I mean, he is still now at this point in his life, so happy to mm -hmm. have his daughters flourishing yep. and his, his new grandbabies, you know, in the mix.